Hi, this is Michelle Madden from the Grand Prairie Chamber of Commerce, and today we have with us Fire Chief Robert Fite. He's going to talk to us about the situation that we have going on, and um, welcome. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, um, you guys are in an extraordinary position with the fire department because you're connecting with the citizens on a regular basis, and I assume that you guys have some special techniques in place right now, given the situation? Yes, we do. Uh, obviously, this is a very odd time for us. We are the service provider for the ambulance service. So our paramedics are out there making, you know, the human contact all day long. So we, we did do four things to make some changes to our operation. Obviously, the first one, we evaluated our PPE or our personal protective equipment and how much we had in our cash and how much it was going to last. So we can talk about that if you want to. We also had to train and educate our firefighters and paramedics on what is COVID-19. Mm -hmm. This is by far not the deadliest thing we face. In fact, it's really pretty simple from a medical standpoint on how to keep yourself safe. But if you turn the TV on, that's all you see is the death and destruction. And you can get wound up over this when in reality, it's really not that big a deal from an EMS standpoint. So we had to educate our staff on the reality of this. We also did two operational changes. We have a paramedic in dispatch from seven in the morning till 11 at night. And that paramedic is answering 911 calls with our dispatcher. And he or she is educating the callers that are calling in on COVID who we've even been called to please come check my fever. Wow. 911 for this. Gosh. But the paramedic and dispatch is filtering the call and also educating the callers on what we're here for and what we're not here for. And then finally, we have a recon unit or two paramedics with all the personal protective equipment who are making all of these general sick calls. This keeps our ambulances in, in order, mm -hmm. this keeps the fire engines in the station, mm -hmm. and they basically go recon the call and assess what the patient needs and they make the decision. So those are really the four things we've done. Okay, so if, if they do, the recon unit shows up and decides, okay, yeah, we really do think this is a potential COVID-19, then what happens? Yeah, so we, we base it on their symptoms. If they're having shortness of breath, and we think they need hospitalization or an emergency room, then that recon unit calls for an ambulance. Okay. If they are just symptomatic with a low grade fever, but are perfectly able to carry on the functions of life we help find them a local clinic we call their doctor for them try to get an appointment we just help give them guidance to reassure they're going to be able to get through this but not everybody needs an ambulance right right and so you mentioned ppe so how are you guys set because you like you said when you're on watching the news you all you hear about is that everybody doesn't have it yeah we have is the gloves and the masks and uh, the eye protection were good. What we're struggling getting is, are the gowns. Oh. Uh, oddly enough, it's funny, we, we do this conversation today. We got our third shipment of gowns in. Mm -hmm. These are paper gowns that sort of keep the fluids off of our uniform. That's really all it does. It keeps the droplets off of our uniforms that we don't spread it mm -hmm. to other people. The gowns came in and they're all pink. <laughs> Do you know it's not October? Or, yeah, that's yeah, right. That's yeah, good. so we're about to deliver all these games to our firefighters who are type A, macho, mm -hmm. mostly men, and uh, they're going to be in pink gowns. So, eh. Well, hey, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> um, so, you know, not everybody should call 911. So, you know, if you're experiencing symptoms at home, I think you mentioned shortness of breath and a fever. What's the fever range again? Yeah, it's really anything over 99.6. Uh, you've seen things on TV of 100.4. Uh, the, the message has changed so much from the federal mm -hmm. to the state to the county level, mm -hmm. both on who can get outside, who can't get outside, who should be tested. Right. Uh, that has been frustrating from a fire chief standpoint and from a citizen standpoint. Mm -hmm. It's hard to know the rules each day by day. But 911 has always been here for people to call. We are the EMS has become the primary health care giver to many of our citizens who don't have insurance. Right. We, we, we assume that role and we're proud of it. But during this very short-lived crisis that we're going through, we are not 
going to be people's primary health care to take fever and to evaluate their cough. So that's why we're filtering it dispatch. But the ones that truly need our help are the ones that are struggling breathing, dizzy, having chest pain associated with this. Those that go beyond just a routine virus with flu-like symptoms. Right. And of course, everybody that would normally, if they're experiencing you know, like heart attack or stroke symptoms or something like that. Of course, just standard operation. Yep. You need to give a call to 911. And that doesn't even go through the paramedic screening that we have in just Okay. The chest pains, the strokes, the car wrecks, uh, the falls off a ladder, those automatically get routed without any delay. And you know, one thing I was curious about, since all this um, shelter in place kind of situations going on, I'm assuming that your calls for things like car accidents have gone down significantly. Would that be true? It is. It's interesting uh, from a police and fire standpoint. Mm -hmm. We are seeing less car wrecks and less uh, roadside stuff okay. and less business issues, you know, accidents in a business. Yeah. But we have seen an increase in home accidents. Oh my gosh, yeah. Example, many people are out trimming trees that don't usually trim trees and we've right. had some falling off ladders. Mm -hmm. We've seen an increase in domestic violence. Yeah. People are home, people are stressed and right. the times are tough. So those are just the normal things we see. Okay, okay. And then um, was there anything else you wanted to tell us about what's going on or anything you'd like us to get out to our public? Yeah, you know, I, I had to get in front of our firefighters about 10 days ago because this really got us spun up and our firefighters were just really struggling with, you know, what this is and how bad is it going to be? And, you know, we had to remind them that these are, guys and ladies that are used to crawling through a smoke-filled hallway, not knowing what they're going into. Right. Uh, these, we're on I-30 at three o'clock in the morning with traffic zooming by us. Mm -hmm. This is the least amount of danger we face. And mm -hmm. once you put it in that perspective, that this is a virus that we can keep off of us from PPE, we can mitigate it, that slow down, calm down, that this will pass, it really helped to know the, the reality is this is temporary and it is by far the least danger we face as a paramedic. Right, right. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us. And I know our chamber members will appreciate knowing some insight into the Grand Prix Fire Department. So um, with that, I guess um, if they have any other questions for you, they can funnel, funnel them to me or do you want? Yeah, they do, my email is on the web. Okay. Uh, most all your businesses have it anyway because I interact with them a lot so uh, just have me email me and okay. I'll have the question. All right well thank you so much Chief Wright we appreciate you and we will um, hopefully we'll see you out on the road or out and about sometime real soon. As always. Thank you.